Hey, how's it going, Steve? Sorry for the delay on this project. I've been really busy, but I did do some testing and looked at some older videos I have of similar machines, and I want to tell you what I came up with. Now, when we initially discussed the concept of using this cyclone burner, we talked about how the back end would have a negative pressure zone in the center cyclone area. And that is true up to a certain point, but once the performance goes past a certain condition, you do start to shoot a little flame out both sides of the burner. So I feel like we might accidentally find ourselves in a scenario where we want more power, but then we're exerting a back pressure on the Syngas intake port. Now, this center region will have a lower pressure than the outer region, but that doesn't mean that this region is always lower pressure than atmospheric pressure. So because of that, I wanted to show you a couple of designs that I had come up with. And they basically are trying to capture the concept of anti-tar buildup and tar mitigation. So before I talk about these two, let me show you something real quick. This right here is a dissected ejector. And essentially what we have here is a plenum cavity. I don't know if you can see that. This plenum is charged by this particular inch and a half, or maybe this is a two inch intake port. And by charging this plenum with blower air, it causes a thrust in this direction, which induces a vacuum in this tube here. So in our case, if we were to send preheated hot combustion air into this plenum, it would draw a vacuum in this back tube, which we would have connected to the Syngas. And the reason why I want to use preheated combustion air is because if we just shoot cold combustion air into this zone and the Syngas touches it, this whole area will build up with tar and we could have some performance uh, drop off and, and maybe some maintenance required that we could otherwise get away with. In this particular drawing here, this is the simplest of the two concepts I'm proposing. We do not have to scavenge heat from this particular region. Essentially in this drawing, we have these two lines here, which represent the rotor drum that contains the biochar. This port right here is, is the old Syngas intake to the furnace. And in this drawing, we're using it to preheat our combustion air so that when it gets into the ejector plenum, it's not cooling down the Syngas zone and causing a tar buildup in this region, which would incur maintenance and shutdowns or outages, whatever you want to call them. So in this diagram here, we have a cyclone combustor with a radiant tube running parallel to the biochar rotor or the pyrolysis chamber. And we have a propane line coming in here, mixing with the combustion air, giving it a good amount of time to mix. We have two electrodes here that would ignite the gas, and this would just come in at a tangent and spin the gas, and it would burn in a flame tube of a length consistent with the zones that we can keep red hot. This is another look at another option that we have. This is basically a reverse jet engine. Rather than having an exterior combustion can liner full of holes with combustion air coming in from the outside and fuel on the inside, we have an interior probe with combustion air holes throughout its length. And that would provide sort of a jet engine action in this region and would get this tube to glow red hot. On the front of that, we have our preheated combustion air coming into the ejector plenum. The green lines represent the Syngas, and this divergent thrust of air would cause a vacuum in this region, inducing the draft that we need to pull the Syngas into the combustion zone. And if we found that the ejector produced too much vacuum, we would just simply have a valve on the Syngas line to reduce that draft. But out of the two, I think this might perform a little bit higher than this design, but what we could do is build this design first with an ejector 
and the intake port and a small six inch cyclone combustor and see how that performs. And if we feel like it needs a little bit more of a performance boost, we could just chop it up a little bit and add this thing here. I do feel like this would run at a higher performance, but um, it wouldn't hurt to try this first. We, because we're using propane, we may get similar combustion characteristics out of a simple design like this, which would definitely save you money in the cost of materials and fabrication. So to build one of these and test it, um, we're looking at around 500 bucks in material and labor. So if you decide you want to pull the trigger on this, what I would do is send you an invoice and we would probably try this one first with a similar ejector connected to the, the side of it. And um, I do have a couple of very sensitive vacuum gauges that we could use to detect the magnitude of the pressure drop in this region. So I am proposing that we build a five and three quarter inch diameter cyclone combustor that's about maybe 24 to 30 inches long. I'll have to get another look at those pictures you sent me to determine the length. We don't want it to hit the pyrolyzer tube, obviously. Now, I do recommend we install it in such a way that it's parallel to the rotating pyrolyzer, but for the test, we're just going to have this thing sit down. It doesn't have to. It can stick straight out, just like the flame did, and we would still get a lot of performance out of that, but as far as the radiant power of the metal, radiance works through line of sight. So if we have it facing this way, not as much, a lot of the radiation is going to be going off in this direction and up on the ceiling versus, you know, if we got it this way, at least we're getting half of it on the work. But um, I recommend we just give this a try first. If we don't like the way it works, if it's not giving us the power we want, um, we can just do this. But I have a feeling I can make this happen. So we should start with this. Let me know what you think.